Spiders and mosquitoes and moths in here. We do also have bats, but it's quite rare to actually see them. And the largest animal that lives inside of the cave is actually our salmon. So if you're lucky, you might see some fish here swimming in the waters as well. But they can be a bit shy, so they aren't always out on the doors. In the back of this room up here, you can see one of the more famous pieces of limestone formations. This one is called the Eagle Wing, and it was the voice that I had been keeping. You can see to the right that it's a bit more white, that is pure limestone, and to the left, where it's a bit more yellow, that is usually iron that has colored it. We can also see a little bit of green, and that is alders that are starting to grow because of the lights here and the high humidity. So in some places where the lights shine a lot like this, you can see a bit of green as well. Det här var kul. Akta huvudet. Also because this room is very long and then it goes high up to the ceiling here, so it's almost shaped like a chapel as well. And here you can imagine when they came in with their small candles and started to light up these white lights of We can also see up here in the ceiling that there's a lot of small formations growing. To the left here we have remains from the time when this was a coral reef. And if you look closely on this wall, you can see that it almost looks like worms in a lot of places. Those are sea lilies that have been fossilized. And that is one of the most common fossils that we can see here in the woods. So the Lumen of the Cape, it's a so-called karst cave, and that basically means that all of these cave rooms, they have been created because of the water flow that's been going through here. The 
water has broken down the softest parts of limestone and brought it out of the cave, and then it's the harder core of limestone here that's been left, where you see a lot of fossils. And that's also very similar to how the rocks at the coasts of Scotland are created, then it's always the core of limestone that's still standing. So in here the water flow was of course much greater back in the day when this cave was created. You can still see that we have some water on the sides here, but it's not that much now in the summertime and it's not flowing that much at all. But when it's been raining a lot, we usually notice a couple of days later that the water makes its way down to the ground and into the cave, and then we get a much more active flow here and it can be dripping more from the ceilings as well. And in springtime, when the snow is melting on the island, the water levels here can get so high that it goes all the way up to your stomach. And then we can't even have guided tours, of course. So it is still quite effective, right? In the back of this room, you can also see something very unique. This is a small fern that has started to grow in here water. And we believe that some seeds may have seeds only thanks to artificial light and the keep us surviving here because naturally the turkey and the vegetation and all has to keep it. At the beginning when they explored uh, here, but their journey stopped there because there was so much water on the way forward. The water depth over there can be up to four meters deep. But the boys, they didn't know how deep the water was and they did not know how far in the tunnel went on either because for them it was pitch black. And of course the water was also very cold so they did not really feel like swimming there. <laughs> but then they were very lucky and managed to find a small rubber raft. And they could bring that rubber raft through the small middle side into the room here. And here they had to blow it up. And with help of their small boat, they could then proceed on the water there and continue to explore even deeper. Luckily today we have the much easier concrete walkway over the water there so you do not have to worry about taking any boats now to come to the Do not touch. This room, the Great Hall, because this was the largest one that they had found so far. Do not touch anything in here. No touch in the cave. And it's where we are standing now, but it also extends back here where we will continue. So all of this is actually in one large room. But in this part, we can see one of the more beautiful pieces of light up here. It's called the altar, and it's thanks to a girl that went on one of these tours a very long time ago. She thought that you could see biblical figures uh, standing up here. So what she saw to the left was the lamb. In the middle we have Joseph. And to the right it's Virgin Mary with her child in her arms. So with some creativity you can actually see them standing up here. A bit up to the right here we also have the giant plumber's canning tooth from Northern mythology. And I will talk about these different formations. The ones that grow from the ceiling, they are the ones called stalactites. And the ones that grow from the bottom, they are called stalagmites. Och på svenska finns det en jätteenkeltum regel för att komma ihåg vilka som är vilka av de här. Det är att stalaktiter med T, de växer från taket. Och stalagmiter med M, de växer ifrån marken. What you see on the side here that looks like a frozen waterfall, that's called flowstone. And all of these different formations, they grow in the same way. And it's thanks to the water that comes into the cave. So like I talked about in the earlier room, the water always brings with it a tiny bit of limestone and then when it comes here to the different cracks in the ceiling and it's about to drip down, each water drop always leaves a tiny bit of limestone behind so it builds up over time. And this process, it takes an extreme amount to grow just one centimeter in 200 years. Oi. And that's why it's so important that we do not touch any of these, because naturally we have different fats on our fingers, and if we touch these, the fat makes it so that the limestone can't attach anymore, and then the water will just drip down without them being able to grow. So that's why we have to be careful where we place. 
raise our hands. On the opposite wall here, you can see another type of formation. These are called drapes when it's growing at a slight angle like this. And one of the longest drapes that we have in the public part of the cave, it can actually be seen here to the left. Thanks to its length, the boys thought a fitting name for this one would be the Great Wall of China. <laughs> Also up in the corner here you can see that it almost looks a bit like cauliflower and that is something called mountain milk. Then it's usually bacteria that has reacted with the limestone and created a bit of a bubbly look instead. We're now going to proceed further into this room and to the left I will light up a very unique uh, flowstone but it's important to note that we cannot touch it. So we You can go up to the door and uh, wait there. which are cave explorers, they wanted to see if they could get even further into the cave from this wood. And that's when they found a new path that you can see up behind here. We will see it a bit better from the next room, but it's like a small hole in the ceiling there. And you have to imagine that all of this, it was filled with dirt and gravel, so they had to dig there by hand in order to get to the other side. So it must have been quite an amazing feeling for them when they eventually dug through there and put in their heads on the other side and got to see a whole new cave that no one else had set a foot in before. And of course, that they got to see the new cave that even continued from this wall here. Otherwise, back in the day, it was a cave wall all the way over here. So in the beginning, when they opened up for the public, the tours always ended here and you have to turn around and go back in the same way again. But in 1979, that's when they opened up and then made this uh, artificial way to the last room. And then they also built out an exit tunnel, so it would be a better flow of people through here. So that's what they have done in the cave, apart from this and the entrance and exit tunnels, is that in each cave room, they always also made a pillar like this one. These are artificially created just to have safety and stability in the cave. And of course, we have the light and the concrete that we have walked on, which is artificial. But other than that, everything in the cave is mostly natural, and all of the cave rooms they are naturally created by the water, and it's not something that has been done for the moment. Well, of course. 
course, this is a lost room in the Lumion that came as a whole, because when we have all this far, we have about almost 200 meters in here. And to put this into perspective, the Lumion that came is in total over 4 kilometers long. This is a giant place. And if I'm here, you can see well, that we have a couple of boats. These can be taken an additional 500 meters to the cave and are so called cave adventures. It's a three hour long journey where we can walk in high water and crawl in some places. But then you will get to borrow fuel equipment and boots and help. in the